All right, thanks for watching. And today I wanna show you how to differentiate using linear algebra. Because I really wanna illustrate the essence of linear algebra, which is really to go from something very abstract to something very concrete. So consider the following linear transformation. Uh, or maybe here's the example. The example is, let's differentiate, let's say the polynomial, let me see, uh, 2 plus 3x plus 4x squared. And suppose you don't know what differentiation is. Then, first of all, this thing lies in the space of polynomials of degree less than or equal to 2, so in P2. And you have this very abstract vector, 2 plus 3x plus 4x squared. x squared. And look, so to differentiate this in linear algebra, what you would do, you would consider the linear transformation, which takes this polynomial and maps it to a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 1. So let t go from p2 to p1, and t of p equals p prime. And this is, again, a, you can show it is a linear transformation. So this is p2, this is p1, and this is t. And again, this is a very abstract thing. So we start from our input, and we want to get our answer, which is the output. The beautiful thing about linear algebra is that it allows you to go again from the abstract to the very concrete. So this is a very abstract polynomial. What we do know are like lists of numbers. So we are way more familiar with R3. So let's go now from P2 to R3. Using what's called a coordinate function, and I like to call it Phoebe, and if you look at my video about miracles of linear algebra, I define what phi b is. And to do this, to define this phi b, we first need a basis. So let beta, let's do the easiest one, be the standard basis. x squared, standard basis. Basis of p2. And then phi b is just a coordinate vector. So phi b takes an abstract vector, let's call it v, as an input, and spits out the coordinates of v with respect to the basis. So in this case, what is phi b of this polynomial? Well, let's see. The coordinates of this are what? Well, to find coordinates, you need to express this abstract thing in terms of our uh, uh, basis. So notice, um, 2 plus 3x plus 4x squared. Well, that's precisely 2 times 1 plus 3 times x plus 4 times x squared. So what this is telling us is that the coordinates of this abstract polynomial are just 2, 3, 4. So what we did now is simply we took this abstract thing, converted it into a concrete list of numbers, which here it's 2, 3, 4. All right, the next thing it's simply to find the matrix of T, because T is an abstract linear transformation. We would now like to find a very concrete matrix. And to do that, all we need to do is to uh, find the matrix of T with respect to beta here and some other basis of P1. But again, just to make stuff easy, let gamma be the standard basis of P1. Basis of P1. And 
Now, okay, we need this picture. Uh, let's calculate the matrix of T, which I like to call phi T. Uh, other people call it A. And again, phi T, like Regina Falange in my other video. So let phi T be the matrix of T with respect to those two bases. So this is basis beta, this is gamma. And how do you define T with respect to those bases? You just um, take T at the input vectors and express it in terms of the output vectors. So this is beta, this is gamma. So let's calculate T at 1 x x squared. So T of 1, that's the derivative of 1. And this you can use in this case because, of course, we need to know diff how to differentiate to do this problem. But the point is, we're not differentiating this very complicated vector. We're differentiating easier vectors. 1, x, x squared. So 1 prime is 0. And then you can write this as 0 times 1 plus 0 times x. You take vectors in beta and express it in terms of gamma, which tells you that the first column of t is 0, 0. And then you continue t of x equals to 1, and then that's 1 times 1 plus 0 times x, and you get 1, 0. And lastly, t of x squared, that's 2x, and that's 0 times 1 plus 2 times x. That gives you your matrix. It's also called A. All right, and notice it's a 3 by 2 matrix, which will tell us that it, somehow this matrix goes from R3 to R2. Except it doesn't really make sense because a matrix is not a linear transformation. We would like a linear transformation that says multiply by A, and this is precisely what's called, so in the Bay Area, they call it SF. Here they call it LA, because it's SoCal. So this is LA. And then what you do, so what is then the matrix T of this? Well, it's just LA of this vector. So. By definition, LA of x, so LA from the, I don't know, uh, V, is just A times V. So now, let's calculate LA of this vector 2, 3, 4. I'm running out of space, but I don't need that anymore. And again, uh, the idea is T is like LA, so differentiating is just like multiplying this vector 2, 3, 4 by A. So LA of, if you want, uh, let's say, let's write it in terms of column vectors, 2, 3, 4. That's A times 2, 3, 4, which is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 2 of 2, 3, 4. And then if you do that, that becomes just 2, 3, and 8. So once you do that, you get the, the concrete vector, 3, 8. And again, we have expressed the fact that, you know, T is like LA. So if you multiply this concrete matrix by this concrete vector, you get a concrete vector. The only other thing we need to do is to express it back as a polynomial. But if phi b goes from polynomials to vectors, well phi inverse should go to polynomials, but here we have gamma, so we just do phi gamma inverse. And what is phi gamma inverse? It just takes a list of numbers as its input and spits out a polynomial. So phi gamma inverse of 3, 8, what is that? That's simply 3 times the first basis vector in gamma times 1 plus 8, 8 times the second basis vector. And now remember, this is gamma, so gamma is 1x. So indeed, we get 3 plus 8x. 
which tells us in the end, if you do this, you do get a 3 plus 8x. And indeed, you can verify that the derivative of 2 plus 3x plus 4x squared is 3 plus 8x. I know it's a ridiculous way of doing this problem, because in calculus you just know how to differentiate things, but I want to really explain, first of all, the whole point was to explain this diagram. Why? Because in the book they just write it like that without explanation. But also, I want to explain that, you know, uh, really the interplay of linear algebra. Because here you're dealing with an abstract problem, which could be very complicated. Think PDEs deal with linear transformations, at least linear ones. Uh, and this interplay between really abstract linear transformations and concrete matrices. And in the end, by the way, what do we get? What is this saying? It says that if you ap first apply phi B, and then you apply LA, and then you apply phi gamma inverse, this whole process going from here up to here is just T. And if you just multiply by phi gamma inverse here, if you multiply by phi gamma, you do get in the end that, so this is the identity, and therefore LA phi B beta equals to phi gamma T. This is what's called like a commutative diagram, because basically going from here to here is the same thing as going from uh, here to here with uh, phi uh, gamma. All right, so I hope you like this interesting way of differentiating functions. Uh, if you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.